Have you ever wondered what the final days of a comedy legend might look like? Tim Conway, a name synonymous with laughter and joy in American households, had a life story that wasn't all chuckles. His daughter's recent revelations paint a picture far from the comedic scenes he was known for. Let's dive into the life of Tim Conway and uncover the unexpected truths of his last days. Tim Conway, the man behind the laughter. Tim Conway, born Thomas Daniel Conway on December 15, 1933 in Willoughby, Ohio, wasn't just a comedian. He was a beacon of humor that lit up American television for over six decades. His journey from the small town of Chagrin Falls to the glimmering lights of Hollywood is a tale of talent, timing, and sheer comedic genius. But who really was Tim Conway, the man who could make the nation laugh with just a facial expression or a well-timed line? Conway's early life, growing up in a relatively modest setting with his father, a groomer for polo ponies, and his mother, a homemaker, was perhaps unremarkable. Yet these humble beginnings shaped a man who would later find joy in making others laugh. After majoring in television and radio at Bowling Green State University and serving in the army, Conway's first foray into showbiz wasn't as a comedian, but rather in a more sedate role at a Cleveland NBC affiliate station. It was here that Conway's comedic talents began to simmer as he wrote and performed sketches that gradually caught the attention of a wider audience. The year 1962 marked a significant turn in Conway's career. He won the hearts of viewers as the bumbling ensign Charles Parker in the popular sitcom McHale's Navy. This role not only showcased his innate talent for physical comedy, but also set the stage for his future endeavors. However, it was his stint on The Carol Burnett Show that truly cemented his status as a comedy icon. Here, Conway was a comedic chameleon, transforming into characters like the hapless Mr. Tudball and the painfully slow-moving oldest man, each character a testament to his versatility and impeccable timing. Conway's comedy was characterized by its spontaneity and unpredictability. Co-stars often found themselves struggling to keep a straight face during scenes with him. His ability to ad-lib and his penchant for veering off script added a unique freshness to his performances making each appearance a delightful surprise for both the audience and his fellow actors. His commitment to his craft earned him multiple Emmy Awards, a tangible recognition of his talent and impact on the world of comedy. Beyond television, Conway's talents shone on the big screen as well. His collaborations with Don Knotts in films like The Apple Dumpling Gang and The Private Eyes were met with affection from audiences who loved their quirky slapstick humor. Additionally, Conway's voiceover work in animated series like Scooby-Doo and SpongeBob SquarePants brought his comedic touch to a younger generation, proving his appeal was timeless. Yet, despite his on-screen hilarity, Conway's personal life was more complex and layered. His two marriages, the first to Mary Ann Dalton, with whom he had six children, and his second to Charlene Fusco, painted the picture of a man who valued family. But as his health began to decline, the dynamics within this family would become strained, revealing a side of Conway's life that was as real and challenging as any dramatic role he could have played. The onset of health challenges. Tim Conway's infectious humor and unparalleled comic timing made him a household name. But behind the laughter and applause, a different story was unfolding, especially in his later years. This chapter of Conway's life, marked by mounting health challenges, stands in stark contrast to the vibrant and energetic persona he presented to the world. In 2015, the first public signs of Conway's health issues became apparent during his work on the SpongeBob movie, Sponge Out of Water. It was a shock to many when it was revealed that the voice of Barnacle Boy, a character beloved by both children and adults, struggled to record his lines. This difficulty was a subtle yet poignant indication that something was amiss with the comedy legend. By 2016, these undisclosed health issues had escalated to a point where Conway had to step back from acting, a decision that signaled a significant shift in his life. His retirement from the profession he loved was a quiet end to a luminous career, a career that had spanned over half a century and had brought joy to countless fans. Two years later, 
in 2018, Conway's health situation took a more serious turn. He was diagnosed with dementia caused by a condition known as normal pressure hydrocephalus, NPH, a brain disorder that can cause a variety of symptoms, including difficulty walking, memory loss, and changes in behavior. This diagnosis was not just a personal blow to Conway and his family, but also to his fans, who now understood the gravity of his condition. NPH is a relatively rare disorder, and in Conway's case, it led to a gradual but noticeable decline in his cognitive abilities. The once quick-witted comedian, known for his sharp mind and spontaneous humor, now faced a reality where these defining traits were being eroded. The transformation was as heartbreaking as it was stark. His family and close friends watched as the man who had once been the life of the party became increasingly withdrawn and dependent. As Conway's condition worsened, his need for constant care and supervision increased. This situation was challenging not only for him, but also for his family, who had to navigate the complexities of caregiving and medical management. The progression of his illness brought with it a series of difficult decisions about his care and living arrangements, decisions that often brought stress and discord within the family. In the midst of these health challenges, Conway's family dynamics began to shift. His second wife, Charlene Fusco, and his daughter, Kelly Conway, found themselves at odds over the best course of action for his care. This disagreement eventually escalated into a legal battle, with each side having their own perspective on what was best for Conway. The legal disputes over Conway's conservatorship were not just about medical decisions. They also brought to light deeper issues within the family. It was a painful and public airing of private grief and conflict, a stark contrast to the joyful and light-hearted image that Conway had portrayed on screen. This period was particularly trying for his daughter Kelly, who found herself in the center of a tumultuous and emotionally charged situation. Despite the challenges, Conway's family and friends rallied around him, providing support and comfort in his time of need. The man who had spent his life making others laugh was now in a position where he needed the strength and love of those around him. In the midst of this turmoil, Conway's legacy as a comedian continued to shine bright. His work remained a source of joy and laughter for his fans, a reminder of the incredible talent and joy he brought to the world. His characters, sketches and films continued to be celebrated even as he faced his own personal struggles, family dynamics and legal battles. The final years of Tim Conway's life marked by his struggle with normal pressure hydrocephalus, NPEH, were not just a story of a man battling a debilitating illness. They were also a period characterized by complex family dynamics and contentious legal battles that added layers of emotional strife to an already challenging situation. The central figures in this familial drama were Conway's second wife, Charlene Fusco, and his daughter from his first marriage, Kelly Conway. As Tim's health deteriorated, the question of his care and conservatorship became a point of contention, igniting a legal battle that would publicly unfold, shedding light on the often hidden struggles families face when dealing with chronic illness and aging. At the heart of the dispute was a fundamental disagreement over how best to care for Conway. Charlene, as his wife, held legal authority and had her own ideas about his care, which clashed with Kelly's views. Kelly, deeply concerned about her father's well-being, felt that the care provided under Charlene's supervision was inadequate. This conflict escalated to a legal battle for conservatorship, a move that Kelly believed was in her father's best interest. The legal proceedings were complex and emotionally charged. Kelly alleged that Charlene was treating Conway negligently, an accusation that added fuel to the already fiery dispute. The court battle revealed the deep rifts within the family, with both sides presenting their arguments and evidence to support their claims. In the end, despite Kelly's efforts and allegations, the judge ruled against her, implementing mediation that allowed her visitation rights but kept the conservatorship with Charlene. This outcome was a significant blow to Kelly, who had hoped to have more control over her father's care. The legal decision not only affected the management of Conway's health, but also had a profound impact on the family's internal relationships. 
the court case laid bare the deep-seated tensions and animosities that can arise in families when faced with the care of a loved one. The emotional toll of this legal battle on the family was immense. Kelly described the ordeal as tragic and unnecessary, a sentiment that echoed the pain and frustration she felt. She lamented the missed opportunity for a more collaborative and peaceful approach to her father's care, something she believed could have been achieved had the family dynamics been different. Despite the legal struggles, Kelly's love and concern for her father remained evident. Her memoir, My Dad's Funnier Than Your Dad, Growing Up With Tim Conway in the Funniest House in America, offers a glimpse into her life with her father and the complexities of their relationship, especially in his final years. The book, while celebrating the joyful and humorous moments of her childhood, also delves into the darker aspects of her father's declining health and the subsequent family conflicts. Kelly's relationship with her stepmother, Charlene, also suffered greatly during this period. Once amicable, their interactions became fraught with tension and mistrust, culminating in a complete breakdown of communication following Conway's death. This deterioration of their relationship added another layer of sadness to an already difficult situation. The legal battle and family strife stood in stark contrast to the public image of Tim Conway as a beloved comedian and actor. While fans remembered him for his humour and light-heartedness, his family was embroiled in a dispute that was anything but humorous. The situation underscored the complex realities that often lie behind the facade of public figures. In the midst of these difficulties, Conway's children, including Kelly, found solace in celebrating their father's life in their own way. Following his funeral, they organized a reception at a favorite pizza place of Tim's, a gathering that was more in line with the spirit of their father than the formalities of the funeral service. This event was a testament to their desire to honor their father in a manner that reflected his true essence, a man who loved laughter and simplicity. The daughter's perspective, Kelly's story. In the twilight of Tim Conway's life, amidst the laughter he had gifted to the world, lay a more somber narrative, one that his daughter Kelly Conway courageously brings to light. Kelly's perspective offers a deeply personal and poignant insight into the final chapters of her father's life, marked by illness, family strife, and legal battles. Born as one of the six children from Tim's first marriage to Mary Ann Dalton, Kelly grew up in an environment that was anything but ordinary. Her childhood was, by her own account, filled with joy and laughter, a testament to her father's infectious humor and warmth. This joyful upbringing, however, stood in stark contrast to the challenges she would face later in life as she navigated her father's declining health and the complexities of familial relationships. Kelly's story is not just about being the daughter of a famous comedian, it's about her transformation into a caregiver and advocate for her father during his most vulnerable moments. As Tim's health began to deteriorate due to normal pressure hydrocephalus, Kelly found herself at the forefront of decision-making regarding his care. This role was not without its challenges, as it put her at odds with her stepmother, Charlene Fusco. The shift in family dynamics was abrupt and distressing for Kelly. Once maintaining a warm relationship with Charlene, the onset of Tim's illness marked a turning point, leading to growing tensions and disagreements over his care. Kelly's deep concern for her father's well-being led her to seek conservatorship, a decision that catapulted the family into a strenuous legal battle. Kelly's efforts to gain conservatorship were driven by her desire to ensure the best possible care for her father. She envisioned a scenario where Tim could spend his final days in the comfort of his own home, surrounded by familiar faces and memories. However, this vision was challenged by the legal system's decision to uphold Charlene's authority as Tim's primary caregiver. The court's ruling was a significant setback for Kelly, who felt sidelined in decisions regarding her father's care. Despite her intentions to act in her father's best interests, the legal system's verdict left her with limited influence and access. This outcome was particularly hard for Kelly as she grappled with feelings of helplessness and frustration. The emotional toll of these events on Kelly was immense. She found herself in a heart-wrenching situation, 
watching her father's health decline while being embroiled in a legal and emotional struggle with Charlene. This strain was further compounded by the absence of communication following Tim's death, a period that marked a complete breakdown in her relationship with her stepmother. Kelly's memoir, My Dad's Funnier Than Your Dad, Growing Up with Tim Conway in The Funniest House in America is not just a chronicle of her childhood, but also a candid exploration of the later years of her father's life. In this book, she lays bare the complexities of her relationship with her father, the joys, the challenges, and the heartaches. Her narrative sheds light on the less visible aspects of being part of a celebrity's family, especially during times of crisis. In her writing, Kelly addresses accusations that her legal actions were motivated by financial gain, a claim she vehemently denies. She asserts that her only goal was to alleviate her father's suffering and ensure that he received the best possible care. Her request for conservatorship was driven by love and concern, not financial interest. Kelly's journey through her father's illness and the subsequent family conflicts is a poignant reminder of the multifaceted challenges that come with caring for ailing parents. Her story resonates with many who find themselves in similar situations, navigating the complexities of healthcare, legal systems, and family dynamics. The impact of illness on a public figure. The decline of Tim Conway's health due to normal pressure hydrocephalus, NPH, not only transformed his personal life, but also cast a shadow over his public persona as a beloved figure in American comedy. This chapter in Conway's story highlights the profound impact that illness can have on a public figure, affecting their career, public perception, and the community they inspire. Tim Conway's diagnosis with MPH was a stark reminder of the vulnerability that even the most vibrant and dynamic personalities face. For decades, Conway had been a source of boundless energy and laughter on screen, effortlessly bringing joy to his audience. However, the onset of NPH marked a gradual withdrawal from the public eye, a necessity born out of his declining health. This withdrawal was not just a loss for Conway himself, but for the millions who had grown to love his work. The public's reaction to Conway's illness and eventual passing reflected the deep connection and affection people felt for him. Fans and admirers were accustomed to seeing Conway in roles that exuded humor and vitality. The contrast between this image and the reality of his health condition was jarring. It brought to light the often unseen struggles faced by public figures behind the glamour and spotlight. The news of his illness and the subsequent details about his family's legal battles brought a humanizing and relatable aspect to his life story reminding fans that celebrities, despite their fame, are not immune to life's challenges. The impact of Conway's illness extended beyond his personal life into the broader world of entertainment and comedy. His absence was felt acutely in the industry, where he was revered not just as a talented performer, but as an innovator and inspiration. Conway's unique style of comedy, characterized by its spontaneity and unpredictability, had influenced generations of comedians and actors. His departure from the scene left a void that was deeply felt by his peers and successors. As news of his condition and the surrounding family legal battles became public, there was a renewed interest in Conway's body of work. This resurgence highlighted the lasting impact of his career. Classic shows like The Carol Burnett Show and movies like The Apple Dumpling Gang found a new audience as people revisited the works that had made Conway a household name. His comedy transcended time, bringing laughter to new generations and reaffirming his status as a comedic legend. Conway's illness also shed light on the realities of aging and health in the entertainment industry. His struggle with NPH opened up conversations about the need for better support and understanding for aging actors and public figures. It highlighted the importance of compassionate care and the challenges faced by families in managing the health of their loved ones. These discussions were important not just for those in the industry, but for society as a whole, as they touched on universal themes of aging, illness, and caregiving. The entertainment community's response to Conway's illness and passing was a testament to his influence and legacy. Tributes poured in from fellow actors, comedians, and fans each sharing memories and expressing admiration for his work and character. 
Icons like Carol Burnett, Bob Newhart, and Dick Van Dyke spoke of Conway with affection and respect, underscoring his role as a cherished colleague and friend. These tributes painted a picture of a man who was much more than a performer. He was a mentor, a friend, and an integral part of the tapestry of American comedy. Reflections on Tim Conway's Legacy As the curtains closed on Tim Conway's life, a legacy rich in laughter and warmth remained, leaving an indelible mark on the landscape of American comedy. Reflecting on Conway's legacy is not just about recounting his career achievements, but also understanding the profound influence he had on his audience, colleagues, and the comedy genre. Tim Conway's journey in entertainment was one of both meteoric highs and modest lows, a testament to his resilience and dedication to his craft. From his early days in McHale's Navy, to his unforgettable characters on The Carol Burnett Show, Conway's career was a masterclass in comedic performance. His ability to bring characters to life, often with just a look or a gesture, set him apart as a true comedic genius. His portrayal of characters like the bumbling Meister Tudball and the slow-moving oldest man were not just funny, but also deeply human, resonating with audiences of all ages. Conway's humor was unique in its blend of innocence and sophistication. He had an uncanny ability to make people laugh without resorting to vulgarity or sarcasm, a rare quality in the world of comedy. His style was gentle yet impactful, a reflection of his own personality. He never sought to offend, but rather to bring joy, a philosophy that underpinned his entire career. This approach not only endeared him to a wide audience, but also set a standard for clean, family-friendly comedy. Beyond his on-screen persona, Conway was also known for his humility and kindness. Colleagues and friends often spoke of his down-to-earth nature and genuine warmth. Despite his fame, he remained grounded, always valuing the relationships he had with those around him. His collaboration with other comedy greats, such as Don Knotts and Carol Burnett, showcased not just his talent, but also his ability to work harmoniously and elevate the performances of those around him. Conway's influence on comedy was far-reaching. He inspired generations of comedians and actors who saw in him a model of comedic timing and physical humor. His legacy is visible in the work of many. Contemporary comedians who have borrowed elements of his style, whether knowingly or unknowingly, the landscape of American comedy as we know it today has been shaped in part by Conway's contributions, a legacy that extends beyond his own body of work. The respect and admiration Conway garnered were evident in the outpouring of tributes following his passing. The entertainment community, including legendary figures and newer talents, acknowledged his impact on their careers and the industry as a whole. These tributes often highlighted not just Conway's comedic talent, but also his character as a person, underscoring the deep respect he commanded. Conway's legacy is also preserved through his work's lasting popularity. His films and television shows continue to be enjoyed by audiences, a testament to the timeless quality of his humor. The resurgence of interest in his work following his illness and passing introduced his comedy to a new generation, ensuring that his legacy lives on. Tim Conway's life story, with its blend of professional triumphs and personal challenges, offers a nuanced view of success in the entertainment industry. It is a story of talent, perseverance, and the power of humor to bring people together. His journey, marked by both laughter and adversity, is a reminder of the complexities of life in the spotlight. In reflecting on Conway's legacy, it is essential to recognize the role of his family and personal life in shaping his career. His daughter Kelly's memoir and the publicized legal battles shed light on the less visible aspects of his life. These revelations, while painful, add depth to Conway's story, portraying him as a multifaceted individual who faced life's challenges with the same grace as he did its successes.